welcome to theovercomers.net, my friends. The Overcomers is an internet ministry with the purpose of teaching God's word to whoever hungers and thirsts to know the truth. The message for this hour is Praying According to God's Word. This message originated with Dr. Kenneth Hagen, who passed away in 2003. His teachings have resonated in my life for over 40 years. It was his messages that answered my questions about faith and prayer. Here is what I learned from Dr. Kenneth Hagen's book called Prayer Secrets. Jesus is our mediator, intercessor, advocate, and our Lord. He stands between us and the Father. In no place in the Bible is it recorded that Jesus told his disciples to pray to him. They were always to pray to the Father in Jesus' name. If we wish to be sure that our prayers reach the throne of God, we must come according to the rules laid down in the, in the Bible. In John 16, 23 and 24, it says, And in that day you shall ask nothing of me. Most assuredly, I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Until now you have asked nothing in my name. Ask, and you will receive, that your joy may be full. Notice that Jesus said, In that day you shall ask nothing of me. Jesus said this because he was going back to heaven. He was talking about the mediator session at the right hand of the Father after he ascended to heaven and was seated on the right hand of the Father. Another translation reads this, In that day you shall not pray to me. Jesus said to ask the Father in his name. There is no other way to pray. We can tell how much Jesus, we love Jesus and appreciate him. And when it comes to praying and asking, we must ask the Father through Jesus' name. In Ephesians 3, 14 and 15, it says, For this cause I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. It is not important what church you belong to, but it is important whose family you belong to. Many people know that praying to God they know about praying to God, but they know nothing about praying to the Father. They don't sound like they really know him. He is the God of this world. He is a father to me. There is real joy in knowing that God the Father will answer our prayers. Smith Wigglesworth was installing some plumbing in a large house one day. And a lady of the family came in, watched a while, then left. Finally, the woman came back into the room and locked the door. She asked Wigglesworth if he would tell her something. She asked, what in the world is it that causes that wonderful expression on your face? You look as if you're full of joy. He then told her, that at breakfast that morning, his wife had come downstairs and informed him that two of their children were very ill. He said before they even ate, they went upstairs, laid hands on their children, and their children were instantly healed. Wigglesworth was so happy because he had asked and received. So his joy was full. The lady then asked Wigglesworth if she could know God like he does. Standing right there, she accepted the Lord as her Savior. 
She then asked Wigglesworth how she would keep this experience. He told her the only way to keep it was to give it away. He told her to tell all her friends about being saved. You see, Wigglesworth would have, been, have looked worried and sad if his children had still been sick. Instead, he had joy on his face. This ought to be the way it should be with all Christians. In John 16, 24, it says, Ask, and you shall receive, that your joy may be full. In, um, in the song, Love One Another, it says, This is my commandment, that you love one another, that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another, that your joy may be full. And it goes on, but the main thing that God says in his word is to love one another. That is the second part of the, all of the laws put together. Okay, now. You have to have that joy that Wigglesworth had even before you see the hand of God remove the problems and answer your prayer. In 1 Peter 5, 5 to 7, it says, God resists or stays away from the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you or lift you up in due time. Cast all your cares upon him, says Jesus, for he cares for you. Another time, Smith Wigglesworth was facing desperate financial need. He was visiting in a home of a very wealthy man, but said nothing about his problem. He cast every care on the Lord God and was whistling and very happy. The rich man was not in good spirits and he told Wigglesworth that he would give all that he owned to have the spirit that Wigglesworth had. Wigglesworth told him it wouldn't cost him anything. All he had to do was cast all his cares upon Jesus. He was just obeying the word of God in 1 Peter 5, 7. Another time, Hagen's wife said she noticed that Kenneth's financial troubles never bothered him a bit and that he was just as full of joy with or without his problems. His attitude proved that Hagen had cast all his cares upon God. During one of these times, Hagen was preaching in a church close to home. After he had been there a week, the pastor asked him to stay and preach longer. He asked Hagen what salary he needed. Hagen told him, and the pastor said that it was more than his church had ever paid an evangelist, but they would give Hagen that amount. They both prayed and agreed on his needs, that his needs would be supplied. So on Saturday, after the service on Sunday night, before the service on Sunday night, Hagen went home, and while he was there, he discovered that some emergencies had arisen, and he needed $200 more. Hagen knew that when he went back to talk to the, to preach on Sunday, that the pastor would be dismayed. But Hagen had already obligated himself to preach for a couple of weeks. Therefore, all he could do was pray to the Lord to supply all of his needs. Oh, little friend, we know that the Lord God promised in Philippians 4.19, I shall supply, and my God shall supply all your need according to my riches in glory through Christ Jesus. So when Hagen returned to the meeting, 
He didn't say anything to the pastor. The pastor told him later that they had not met the budget and that they did not have enough to pay the minimum he promised. Then Hagen told the pastor about the amount he would need to have in order to meet his emergencies. The pastor became upset. So Hagen told him that he would believe God for it. And the pastor agreed to believe with him that God would meet Hagen's needs. When the meeting was over, Hagen received all the money he needed. You see, the need was there. So God met the need. He gave Hagen even more than he needed because he had walked by faith and not by sight. He thanked God for meeting all his needs even before he received the money. Hagen lived by Ephesians 5.20, which says, At all times and for everything, giving thanks in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to God the Father. In this verse, the Apostle Paul is telling us that it is the, to the Father and not to Jesus that we give thanks. The name of Jesus is the doorway to the heart of the Father. When you desire to get answers, follow the teachings of the Word. Pray to the Father and ask in Jesus' name. If you go to the bank with a check and ask the cashier to check, cash that check for a friend, you will be asked if you have money in, on deposit to guarantee it. However, if that check has the name of a person who has an account in the same bank, there will be no questions asked. We fail in our prayers sometimes because our approach is wrong. We should thank God Jesus has a standing in heaven. He's, he is the only approach to the Father. Let us use the mighty name of Jesus that he will, has given us. Jesus gave us the uh, power of attorney to use his name. In Mark 16, 17, he said, In my name shall they cast out devils. We have a right to use the name against the devil. We have a right to use the name against the devil. We have the right to use Jesus' name against the devil and to call out demons that bind men's souls. Several years ago, Hagen was holding a meeting in East Texas, and they were studying the prayer, the subject of prayer. In those meetings, two things took place that changed the whole course of Hagen's life. He had always believed in divine healing, but there were some cases in which Hagen was afraid. In particular, they, these were mental cases and in cases of demon possession. Then the Lord explained to Hagen how he, God, saw the problem. The Lord said, if a person were going to his car to unlock the door, he could say that he unlocked the door. But in reality, he didn't unlock it because the key actually does the unlocking. When he starts the car, the key really does the work. A key starts the ignition. The key is the important factor in the whole situation. So Hagen began looking at this from God's standpoint. He said to himself, I'm not the one casting out the devils, but Jesus gave me the key to do it. Jesus' name is the key, and he is doing it. Hagen's fear of casting out devils disappeared. Another time, he lay in, on his bed studying the Word of God. He began to see something else. I encourage you, my friends, to follow up on the Word and read it and meditate or think about it. Our spirits need to be educated and trained. 
just because we read the word of God is no sign that our spirit is educated. I could sit down and read a whole book on, sign, on a scientific material, but that is no sign I, I understood what I was reading. God's word in the same way has to get down inside us until we receive the revelation of it in our hearts. So many times when people read the Bible, they do not know what they are reading. They are trying to grasp it with their minds. But actually, we should get it, the revelation of the word, in our hearts. One night as Hagen lay reading, he began to meditate on the scriptures that he read. He began to see something he had never seen before. He saw that the devil is the author of all that is evil and that he is the God of this world. Satan has blinded and bound men. Hagen began to see that those in his own family who were unsaved were bound by the devil. No man would drive his automobile a hundred miles an hour and try to kill himself if he were in his right mind. For example, the Bible says, when the prodigal son went home, he came to himself. In other words, he was no longer blinded by the attractions of this world, like wine, women, and song. When Kenneth Hagin received this revelation, it challenged him. He had been praying for his oldest brother when, who had gone astray. When he discovered that all the praying and fasting he had done in unbelief was not going to answer his prayer. So this is what, he, he reve what was revealed to him. So he rose up with his Bible and said out loud, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you foul devil and demon of hell and spirits that bind my brother's soul, I bind you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He was so full of joy. He knew it was just as good as done. He laid down his Bible and went out of his room whistling and singing. About two weeks later, as he walked into his bedroom, he heard a voice in his head that said to him, Oh, you don't think he's really ever going to be saved, do you? Hagen stopped dead still, shutting it out of his mind and not even letting himself receive those words. But way down inside, he was laughing. I told the devil that I had claimed his salvation and that he knew, Hagen knew it would come to pass. Two days later, the very same spot happened again. He heard the same voice again, asking the same question. You don't think he'll really ever be saved, do you? Again, Hagen stopped and shutting out the thought from his mind. And he told the devil that he had claimed his brother's salvation and had broken Satan's power over him. A few days later, he received a letter from his wife, which stated that his brother had been saved. He wrote back and told her that he had known it for two or three weeks. The name of Jesus belongs to you and me. That name has authority on earth. You have the right to use that name. If the devil can hold you in the arena of thought, he will whip you. If you hold him in the arena of faith, he is a victim. Fight the good fight, Peter said in 1 Peter 5, 8 and 9. He said, be sober, be vigilant, because your enemy, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, 
seeking whom he may devour. Resist him. Be steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brothers in the faith in the world. You have to believe in your heart, in your spirit, that what the word says is true. You see, the devil fought Kenneth Hagin twice. Satan tried to get Kenneth in the thought realm when he said, you don't think your brother will really ever be saved, do you? That is what he kept saying to Kenneth because he wanted to plant that doubt in Kenneth's mind. And that is exactly where people try to solve their spiritual problems, with their minds. And they get all confused worried sick with frowns on their faces. But you, you will act from your innermost being, from your heart, your spirit. Jesus said in Mark 11, 23 and 24, for sure I say to you, whatever says, I'm sorry, sorry whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believe that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Kenneth Hagin was preaching that same year in Portland, Arthur, Port Arthur, Texas, and the services were good, and there were many healings. A Methodist woman came to the meetings and thanked Hagen for the lessons she learned. She told him that she had been sick for over 20 years and had not been able to do her work. She could not even get up and fix breakfast for her husband. She was in her 40s and had two grown daughters. The doctors had not been able to help her. She had been to two different healing meetings but had failed to receive her healing. But in Hagen's meetings, she said that she practiced by saying out loud the prayers he taught her and received her healing. Sometime later, Hagen received a letter from this same woman with an offering enclosed, for she said that she wanted to have a part in helping someone else like she had been helped. She said that she had not known the importance of the Word of God and the name of Jesus. In the privacy of her own home, she had looked up scriptures, raised her Bible up and said, Satan, you who have bound my body all these years, I break your power over my life and I claim my deliverance and healing. She said that for the first time in 20 years, she was doing her own housework. Six months had passed and she was still healed. She said she had the vigor and vitality of a teenager and that she had not felt so good since she was 16 years old. Then she told him about her husband who had never been saved. He would not go to church with her, although he was a good husband. This woman took the Bible up in her own home and said, In the name of Jesus, I break the power of the devil over my husband and claim his salvation. She said it worked like magic. Overnight, he became a new creature. She said they were the happiest they had ever been in their lifetime. She told about her daughters who smoked and danced. She said that she lifted her hands to heaven again and broke the devil's power over them, claiming their salvation. Within 10 days, they had become new creatures. They were delivered from every habit that had bound them and heaven became their home. In conclusion, Olelo friend, when we learn to pray in line with what the Word of God says, our prayers will be effective. Pray with me. 
for the power of the Holy Spirit upon you. Let's pray. O oh, my Father, Isaiah 11, 1 to 4 says that the seven spirits of God rested upon the Lord Jesus Christ. Look into my heart right now, O oh Lord. I want to be an overcomer for the kingdom of God through Christ Jesus. Please grant me your gift of the Holy Spirit and fire. Please pour into my heart your strength and might to stand strong and tall in the face of adversity, your wisdom and understanding to make the right choices each day of my life, your knowledge which spans the Alpha and the Omega, your spirit of counsel to help and comfort those who are in need, your strength and Yo. Your, righteous, your righteousness and judgment that will bring honor, respect, and glory to your, by your Holy Spirit and the fear of the Lord, for this is the beginning of wisdom that keeps me humble in the face of the Almighty. In the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Good night, Olelo friends. God bless you and your loved ones. May his spirit, may he build a wall of protection around your home and around each one of your loved ones all the days of your life. In Jesus' name. Have a good night, my friends, till we meet again. Praise the Lord.